Hello everyone, you are welcome on my YouTube channel Capsule. This is Dr. Vineet Kumar Rai. I will tell you about the limitations of pH partition theory in this video. Uh, this is the trailing video of my previous video on uh, the pH partition theory. Now coming to the limitations of pH partition theory. So uh, in my previous video I told you about uh, the pH partition theory does have some limitations also apart from uh, its beauty. So here why uh, it has some uh, limitations. So the pH partition hypothesis oh, uh, oversimplified the complicated process of uh, drug absorption. Uh, not simplified but uh, it has uh, oversimplified the complicated process of drug absorption due to some assumptions that, uh, that are not true. So uh, if the assumptions are not exactly true so therefore it has uh, its own limitations that are explained in the form of deviations given below. So these are the limitations of pH partition theory. First one is the presence of virtual membrane pH. It considered uh, the presence of virtual pH membrane. Second one is the absorption of ionized truck. Uh, the pH partition theory considered that uh, only unionized form of the drug is absorbed uh, by lipoidal membrane, but uh, there are so many mechanisms that uh, explains uh, the absorption of ionized trucks also. So that is why uh, this is also a limitation. Now influence of gastrointestinal surface area and uh, residence time of the drug. As you all know that uh, the residence time in stomach as well as in intestine differs. And, but this theory consider uh, the residence time in both uh, stomach and uh, intestine is equal and surface area uh, is also equal in both the conditions. Now the next point is the presence of aqueous unshared diffusion layer uh, on the lipoidal membrane that also considered uh, uh, as a rate limiting step uh, for the absorption of the drug. So this theory doesn't consider this uh, diffusion layer, it only considers the lipoidal barrier. So start from uh, the first point that is presence of virtual pH membrane. In this uh, uh, virtual pH membrane, the pH partition hypothesis suggests suggest that only the unionized drug at a given GI lumen pH is absorbed. So this is the pH absorption curve for acidic and basic drug. You can see the dotted line showing uh, uh, the pH partition theory absorption as per the pH partition theory and uh, uh, the complete line showing the exact or uh, the practical value based curve that shows the exact absorption of the drug. So uh, you can see the difference between these two uh, as per the pH partition theory and as the exact value. So uh, this is the curve between uh, pH of GI lumen and rate of drug absorption. So in the second point uh, we can see the SF curve that is called as pH absorption curve denoting the dissociation of the drug that is obtained, uh, obtained when pH is plotted versus rate of drug absorption. Now the dotted line indicates the curve predicted by pH partition hypothesis and the board line now indicates the practical values. Now what are the differences? Uh, the differences in extent of absorption of salicylic acid. Uh, here I am taking the example of salicylic acid. Uh, it has been observed uh, that at given uh, GI pH, uh, the predicted pH uh, partition hypothesis, predicted versus pH partition, partition hypothesis uh, curves are uh, quite different. So uh, the experimental pH absorption curve are less steep as you can see from the figure and shift to the left for a basic drug and shift to the right for a acidic drug. Here uh, you can see uh, for the sorry, here we can see uh, for the acidic drug, the pH partition theory based curve is being shifted to the uh, right direction, and uh, for the basic drug, it is being shifted to the left direction. This is what I'm talking about. Now, the, this led to the suggestion that the virtual pH that is uh, that has been considered by the pH partition theory also called as the microclimatic pH. This is uh, different from the luminal pH that exists exactly on the membrane surface. 
Now, this virtual pH membrane actually determines the extent of drug ionization and thus drug absorption. So, in addition to this uh, particular lim limitation, the next limitation is the absorption of ionized drug. It happens. It is the actual process and uh, there are so many mechanisms that ex explain and then uh, uh, ensure that uh, the ionized drug are also absorbed but the extent of absorption by this process is quite low as compared to the unionized drug. But the pH partition theory consider only unionized form of the drug is absorbed. Now we'll see here in this uh, case, this theory assumes that only unionized form of the drug is absorbed. The permission of the ionized drug is negligible as for this theory, but Practically, it is three to four times less, but we cannot consider it uh, negligible. Now, this is called a principle of uh, non-anic diffusion. Now, the principle is true up to some extent, as ionized drugs have uh, low lipid uh, solubility and poor permeability. Uh, it is usually seen, but uh, if the ionized form of the drug is having sufficient lipophilicity then it will be absorbed efficiently and there are some mechanisms like extra transport mechanism and pair transport and uh, some other transport mechanism that carries the ionic drug to the other side. So we cannot say completely that uh, this uh, form of the drug will not be absorbed uh, into the systemic circulation. However, apart from these assumptions, the pH absorption curve shifts suggested that the ionized form of some drug also get absorbed. Uh, as for uh, the shifting of the curve, we can see. Now, if such drugs have a large lipophilic group in their structure, they will be absorbed passively also, if they are anic as well. Now, some of the examples of this category are, uh, uh, you can see here the example of morphine derivatives. So, uh, these are uh, the ionic drug, but these are having uh, some lipophilic, a uh, strong lipophilic group in their structure. That is why they are uh, absorbed passively, um, as well as from the other mechanisms also. So we cannot consider it negligible. Uh, their absorption involves other mechanisms like active transport, ion pair, and convective flow. Now, the third point is. Uh, the influence of gastrointestinal uh, surface area and residence time of the drug, uh, the time uh, for which the drug stay in the stomach and intestine and surface area of the stomach and intestine are quite different. Now, according to the pH partition theory, the acidic drugs are best absorbed from the stomach and basic drug from intestine. It assumes, uh, or in the condition where they are in uh, unanished form. Uh, this is the main constraint. The drug should be in unannaged form for better absorption as per this theory. But this could be true under uh, conditions where surface area of the stomach and intestine are equal or same. But if the surface area of uh, both uh, the sides, uh, stomach as well as intestine, are not same, then uh, how will you uh, ensure that uh, the absorption will be? better from intestine and uh, it will not be better from in, uh, stomach. So this is the limitation and it could also mean that once uh, an acidic drug reaches the intestine, the remaining uh, part will not be absorbed into the systemic circulation. Suppose if the drug is acidic, then uh, as per this theory, it should be absorbed from stomach only. So, so what will happen with the rest of the drugs? Uh, it will reach to the uh, intestine and it will not be absorbed efficiently and it, it will go into the feces. So uh, this is also true in the case of basic drug and uh, it tells that uh, the basic drug are better absorbed from the intestine. So uh, what will happen if uh, some of the drug will not reach to the uh, stomach, uh, intestine and um, the process of uh, reaching this drug into the intestine is being delayed. So it, it may not be able to attain the therapeutic label. Now, but, but irrespective uh, of the gastrointestinal pH and degree of ionization, both acidic as well as basic drugs are more rapidly absorbed from the intestine. As we have uh, seen, uh, or you can see in my previous video also, I told you about that um, 
uh, about uh, uh, the weak acid or weak bases like drug are better absorbed from the entire length of, length of the gastrointestinal tract. So uh, we cannot say easily that uh, it will absorb from the stomach only and it will, uh, this drug will absorb from uh, uh, the intestine only. Now this is primarily because of its large surface area and secondly uh, because of uh, the long residence time uh, due to the large surface area of the intestine and due to uh, the long residence time of the drug in, inside the stomach, uh, sorry, intestine, uh, the most of the drugs are better absorbed from the intestine. Or you can say the entire length of the intestine. So, this is also a limitation. Now, the fourth one is the presence of aqueous unshared diffusion layer uh, on the lipoidal biological membrane. Here, uh, in this figure, you can see uh, this is uh, the lipoidal biomembrane. And uh, this is the light part and this is the dark part. And dark, dark part is representing uh, the aqueous unshared diffusion layer of the uh, membrane surface that restrict the absorption of the drug somehow. So uh, there are not only one layer, there are two layers, aqueous unshared diffusion layer and the lipoidal membrane. So uh, the drug has to cross both the layers easily so as to ensure uh, its progenies uh, inside the systemic circulation. Now here you can see the pH shift in the absorption acidic and basic drug uh, as discussed earlier also because uh, the bulk of the luminal fluid is not in direct contact with the membrane but a barrier called as uh, aqueous unstirred diffusion layer is uh, interposed between them. So here uh, you can see the two layers and drug has to cross uh, these two layers to, uh, to uh, get available inside the stomach supply. Such a layer has a real thickness and is a barrier to absorption of the drugs. In the original pH partition theory, the partitioning and the lipidal barrier is a rate limiting systems only. But uh, in this case, we have seen that uh, one more layer is there and uh, that is also a rate limiting strip. And uh, due to the unshared, uh, unshared aqueous diffusion layer, a drug has to cross two barriers aqueous barrier as well, as well as lipoidal barrier. Now the drug having uh, drugs having large partition coefficient can rapidly penetrate the lipid membrane but diffusion through unshared water layer is still a rate limiting step and uh, it applies to the high molecular weight fatty acid and bile acid. This is true in the, uh, in the case of these type of drugs. So we cannot say easily that uh, uh, any drug can uh, cross uh, the lipoidal barrier will be available in the systemic circulation easily. Despite its uh, limitations, the pH partition theory is uh, still useful. In conclusion, I can say that it, it is still useful in the basic understanding of the drug absorption and the movement of drug between various compartments. Mm, and not completely denying its existence but uh, still it does have uh, some limitation that has to be considered. Now in my next video I'll uh, tell you about some uh, questions related to the drug absorption specifically uh, from the oral absorption of the drug. So I urge that keep watching us. Thanks for watching.